Hello, hello, hello. Sir David the Bard. It's uh, Thanksgiving, and uh, I'm out front of your house with uh, Chewy. He's my pet kangaroo. I kind of want to get a dog, but um, the kangaroos. <laughs> And Chewy is just, you know, as cute as can be. So I'm standing out front of your lawn. Chewy and I are doing this. Look out your window. <laughs> Look out the... See? <laughs> oh, shit. Chewy just ran off. He's scared. He doesn't like to be on camera. Anyway, anyway, I want to do a Thanksgiving tape, which I've never done. And I, I probably won't again. I may not make it the next Thanksgiving. Now, I have on, from the costume department, which is right here, <laughs> my closet, um... Oh, God, I set the alarm. Oh, oh, stop, stop. Stop. Disarmed. Ready to arm. Chime. I'm a dangerous person these days. Dementia has overtaken me. I start fires. <laughs> I set alarms that I don't know how to unset. Anyway, let me do a Thanksgiving tape here. Let me, let me shift gears. <laughs> oh, I love this. Let me shift gears, God. Live in large, live in large. Listen, I wanted to thank um, many of you I don't know by name. <laughs> I've had a, a million hits. It'll happen there in January. And uh, some of you I do. Some of you have been so kind to me. And on Thanksgiving, um, I want to uh, recognize that. It's not... Uh, it's important that I recognize it because no one has ever cared about me before. No one has ever had any kind of uh, sympathy, empathy, love, compassion. Now I have two or three, or three or four kids that are just tremendously uh, 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 patient to me and loving and kind. But I wanted to kind of set this stage here. Um, when I first started working uh, here on the uh, video show, I had a man and um, I'm not going to disclose names because some of these people are Mormons. Some of these people are good people. It doesn't matter what their religion is. But I had a gentleman, and he goes uh, by the original Wiener. <laughs> and um, when I was early in my show, he helped me with um, some uh, production and introduction and, and things that I've abandoned since then just simply because it's too much work for an old man. He was a wonderful production artist and uh, did introductions and whatever, but I've abandoned them because it's just easier to turn on the TV and go, hey, here I am. And so it has nothing to do with his skills or how beautiful uh, he treated me. Uh, and then I have uh, my friend uh, Mark. <laughs> Damn. Uh, you know, I wish Mark wasn't my friend. <laughs> He's bipolar. And he and I, you know, when we get together, uh, it's just chaos. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a brain in the room. Not a brain in the room. He's a uh, retired, I guess is the right word, uh, radio announcer. He's got a beautiful voice. And um, he's, uh, he's gone through some tough things in his life. And he and I relate. Uh, we've all been Mormons, and uh, we've all uh, had our lives ruined by the Mormon church. So anyway, uh, I want a happy Thanksgiving, Mark. And he runs the barge store. I don't know if he's made a dime yet. I bought my hat to kind of support him. After that, he's on his own. So anyway, um, then I have two girlfriends. And literally, they are girlfriends. Um, Anna, uh, she's, uh, <laughs> she's my substitute for Marie Osmond. And not a bad one. <laughs> I just love her to death. Anna's had some tough times in her life. And uh, she has shared that. Uh, on the show here and with me, and uh, she's got three beautiful children and a uh, single mom, and uh, uh, again, I'm not going to divulge a lot of information about my people. Uh, there's uh, some confidentiality that needs to be there, but she's the president of my fan club, so she's unemployed. <laughs> she had nothing to do. No one sends any letters in. No one does. She just uses the title on her resume. She's as sweet as can be, and um, she, uh, and again, I don't want to divulge confidentialities, but some of you have had some hard, hard knocks. My life looks good compared to the problems my people have had. You know, some of you have been uh, uh, abandoned by family, friends, children. 
Some of you have terrible, terrible dehabilitating diseases. I have a couple of people in wheelchairs. Uh, Ronnie uh, is in a wheelchair and her little um, gay mate, Mary, is, is being a wonderful partner and uh, she wrote me Happy Thanksgiving and uh, here's a girl that um, uh, again a lot of you uh, have some serious I don't I don't mean you don't get everything you want I mean some serious health problems and financial problems I wish I wish to your God I had a million billion dollars and I could just write checks to uh, the, the, the worthy ones that and they haven't done anything in life they've just rolled the dice and uh, there they are. Now I know I'm going to leave out uh, oh, Allison. She called me from Tennessee yesterday. Sweet as can be. She lost 50 pounds. That's a wonderful thing. She she only weighs 10.3 ounces now. <laughs> it's hard to see her when she turns sideways and the wind blows. <laughs> She's gone like a leaf. Anyway, her husband Mike. What a wonderful guy. God, he's so intelligent. He's so smart, and he's so accommodating to her and vice versa. And you know, they came up uh, and we went out to Park City uh, for dinner and, and had a wonderful time. But one been one of the best uh, few days of my life. Um, I've got um, uh, Ron, <laughs> my uh, 3D man. And uh, he's uh, a Mormon and uh, he wishes he wasn't. <laughs> but anyway, Ron, I'm just teasing you. I'm just <laughs> screwing with you. He's uh, been a very, very supportive and kind person to me, and uh, and I appreciate that. And um, you know, I just have so many, and, and I I can see your faces, but I can't you know verbalize that because I don't have a good memory anymore. Uh, if they others come to me, I'll certainly say something. But let me say this: you people have saved my life. You people have saved my... I would have killed myself long ago. Oh, the poor little gal that wrote in this morning. Uh, her husband. On the 18th, it's the anniversary of her husband's suicide. He was uh, bipolar. We kill ourselves a lot. We come back a lot, but we do kill ourselves a lot, too. 30% of us uh, die at our own, with our own hand. And, uh, you know, it just breaks my heart to hear... Um, some of the tragedies you guys live with, you know, it makes me look like, what do I have to complain about? I haven't had to deal with a suicide, except my own. I tried to kill myself five, four or five times. I'm not good at anything. <laughs> so anyway, poor little gal, my heart goes out to you. And uh, uh, when we kill ourselves, it's just because we can't stand this world has nothing to do with you, has nothing to do with you. You're good husbands, you're good wives, you're good people. And uh, in our mind, life is not worth living. And that's more important to us than our relationships with you. And please never blame yourself and please never uh, feel any guilt. Bipolar people, we get in our mind, we're going to kill ourselves, we kill ourselves. Not a lot you can do about it. So I, I want to be thankful for you and uh, your sharing of uh, your problems and your burdens. It makes me feel good that um, you're willing to trust me that much. I try to hold confidentiality uh, sacred. I was trained as a counselor and um, I just uh, wish that I could do more. I have the one gentleman uh, called me from Las Vegas. Mormon and uh, just got divorced and trying to readjust into the real world and he realizes he's been in a bubble he's been a Mormon he doesn't know how to let his girlfriend and maybe fiance have her own life but be married to him she wants he wants her life to be his life that's the Mormon man and the priesthood and uh, so he was struggling with that so my family I'm certainly thankful for. I don't want to bear my testimony here because, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't believe in God. But Mercy has been the most wonderful human being uh, that's come into my life. She's accepted me. She lets me sit here in this chair and rag on her church to a million people. She doesn't give a shit. She won't even watch my videos. She, I don't care. Do what you want to do. Okay. And she's as sweet as can be. 
Today is the first day my little Filipino wife is going to cook a turkey. She's so excited. She doesn't know how to cook a turkey. She's putting the damn thing in at 1 o'clock. She wants me to put it in at 1 o'clock. And then we're going to eat it at 4. <laughs> I remember turkeys living in our oven when I was a little boy. You know, days and days to cook them. But, you know, I'm going to eat a raw turkey to, to keep her happy. And my beautiful daughter, um, Abigail. She's she's my lesbian daughter, and she is the funniest and cutest little thing in the world. And we've just developed a very very close relationship. She's working now, and uh, she takes good care of me. And now she has a smile on her face. I've never seen the child smile all the years that I've adopted her. The last year, suddenly she's just laughing and giggling, and just come to peace with herself and and our family. And uh, my beautiful Allison, um, <laughs> she. I gave her permission last night to, to change doorknobs uh, so hers will lock. Now she's 12 now. She'll be 12 next month. And um, she's a little woman and she needs her privacy. Now the reason we took the lock off her door is she used to set her room on fire. We had to get the fire department in there very quickly. So she now has total privacy and she's not abusing it. And last night uh, I didn't see Allison after 8 o'clock and I wondered, you know, is she okay? And she hung the key way, way up in the, in the hall, so if there's an emergency, we can get in. So um, I took the key, made sure it worked, I went in her room, and there she is just laying on her bed, sound asleep. So I covered her up and uh, shut her door. And then this morning, <laughs> this morning, she is so smart. She noticed that the key had been turned around on the hook. She goes, did you come in my room? And I go, oh, well, mm, nah. Dad, stop that reformed Egyptian shit. Did you come in my room? English? Yes or no? And I said, well, yes. I said, uh, I hadn't heard from you like 11 o'clock at night, and I just wanted to check on you. She says, okay. I saw that key turn. <laughs> Until next time, whichever the way the key is turned, I may hang that sucker back up so the little hot hands, Allison. Oh, she's a doll. And uh, I love her to death. And then my, my wonderful son, Dan, he has been such a, a good son. He and I have stuck together through the mud and the blood and the beer and family relationships. And he's got uh, three of my grandchildren, a wonderful father, a wonderful wife, Paula. She's uh, from Argentina. And they're going to Argentina next week. And I'm going to help drive some of his uh, routes. What a wonderful family. And then my other daughter, who is just <laughs> the most brilliant daughter I have. Rachel Renee, Rachel Renee, oh my God, her and I were at odds for, uh, you know, 59 years. <laughs> now that <laughs> we're down the road, we're the best of friends, she's smart as a whip, she's smart as a whip, and, and that's not a good thing sometimes, because in this world, you're not rewarded <laughs> for intelligence, you're pushed aside for intelligence, and she's had all kinds of uh, difficulties with uh, health on her children and her husband. And she's been there, been there, been there. And uh, I really admire Rachel and the things she's gone through. Now, let me say something to the rest of my family. And I'm going to name you, okay? Michelle, my oldest daughter. Um, <coughs> I've forgotten about these people, so it'll take me a minute to, to think about them. Amy, uh, my daughter. John, my son. Uh, Aaron, my autistic son. And... Um, Adam, <laughs> my asshole bipolar son. Stephen, where are you, Stephen? What jail are you in this morning? I look all over the internet to find Stephen. What jail is he in? He's a drug addict. And, um, oh gosh, I'm sure I've left some out. <laughs> and, and I'm glad. <laughs> and this, uh, this one wife of mine, uh, or old wife of mine, very old now, uh, Jeannie, the head cheerleader. You know, you guys treated me like shit. And you've treated me like shit ever since. Uh, there's been divorces and stealing my kids and uh, everything. And uh, I forgot to mention Nicole. Nicole is a wonderful daughter. Her and I have reconciled, and, and she's got a beautiful new uh, relationship and nice husband and uh, new kids. So uh, Nicole is one of the good ones. But you know, Jeannie, y you were a bitch from the word go. You were a bitch from the word go. I'm glad you're married to an alcoholic. I'm glad you're married to an alcoholic because I think he's a step up from bipolar. I know you didn't like the way I did the bills 
uh, and you thought that you were going into freedom in Oklahoma. <laughs> freedom in Oklahoma, God damn. Freedom in Oklahoma is being able to suck on a bull's balls. <laughs> That's all they do for entertainment there. I went to uh, a, uh, uh, a fair in, in Oklahoma, and they had what we call um, calf, C-A-L-F, calf fries. Yeah, I thought they were like french fries, so I get in line. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to, to integrate into Oklahoma uh, philosophy, intelligence, and uh, sophistication. <laughs> I get up to the front of the line, and they have this little french fry bowl. And I said, you know, I'd like to have a bowl of calf fries. And, okay. And they're filling that up for me. and say, by the way, what are calf fries? What have you fried? And they said, oh, it's bull's testicles. <laughs> I go, <laughs> these people. They have cockroaches for breakfast, bull testicles for lunch. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. The sophistication of Oklahoma. So my, my wife, Jeannie, the cheerleader, <laughs> we were raised, uh, married in California. We had beautiful homes. We had all kinds of things. And she trades all that for an alcoholic husband and bull fries. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they have bullshit for supper. I don't know. But anyway, she's a total Mormon bitch. Total Mormon bitch. She smiles and pretends that everything is wonderful. And she'll stab you in the back a thousand times. Uh, I've learned to heal from that. And uh, that was 18 years of a, of a marriage that um, had gone sour. And uh, she said to me, well, uh, you know, at least uh, he knows how to take care of the finances of the family. <laughs> Two years later, they went bankrupt. <laughs> there, there's Mormon judgment. It says, well, I'm losing weight. When you're in love, you lose weight. Now, now there's, a, there's a hint, girls. You know, get in love and you'll lose weight. Well, a year later, <laughs> I, I'm at the football stadium and Jeannie is the Goodyear blimp. <laughs> Her little hands and feet are out and she's floating over the auditorium or the football field there. So anyway... Um, the Mormons are a cult. They say one thing, they mean the opposite. Um, she's busy, busy, busy uh, doing Mormon, Mormon stuff because she doesn't ever want to sit down and look at her life. Uh, she was, uh, you know, uh, in 11th grade, she was uh, fucking the, 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 the football team there in Choctaw, Oklahoma. And uh, her boyfriend was on the, the team and they went home for lunch for a quickie every damn day. <laughs> Drove her father nuts. Bill Wynn wonderful, wonderful man. And, uh, you know, he was tortured by the Mormon Church and by this daughter. She goes on a mission. She couldn't go on a mission because she had to have a general authority <laughs> interview her vagina. <laughs> See how many tattoos and names were in there. <laughs> so they, they had mercy on her soul. And uh, so anyway, they sent her on a mission. And the first thing she does when she comes back from a mission is gets in the BYU parking lot with the elder scorn president and fucks his brains out. <laughs> you know, people don't change. People don't change. Well, I had mercy on her and uh, married her. She's cute as can be. She's a doll. And uh, married her. And uh, she had a, a, an outward personality <laughs> when she was dressed. I don't... And, and she was, uh, you know, a decent wife. She was a decent wife sexually. I like girls that are experienced. I always have, always will. Just, just put your names down there on the bottom of the thing that says post. Anyway, uh, she can go fuck herself. She can say, you know, I was a failure in life. I was this, I was that. And, but you know, you people have vindicated me. Somebody thinks I have something to say. Somebody likes me. Now, it's at the end of my life. You know, I had to go through the entire part of the, the, most of my life being a miserable uh, person because my mother, there's another one that, you know, uh, a lot of people say, God rest her soul. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, you know, Satan rest her soul. Uh, my mom uh, was good at times uh, as a mother. Most of the time she was terrible. She was terrible. She always made fun of me. She always tried to make me feel down. Um, I was obviously smarter than she was. I went to college. She didn't. And uh, she was always trying to bring me down to uh, her level. So all these people in my life that have been total assholes, screw you now. I have a wonderful family. I have some sons and daughters that are very, very good to me that I love uh, beyond, you know, life itself. I have the most beautiful little wife that takes care of me and loves me. 
and um, my fans, if you want to call yourself a fan, <laughs> which we might not, see, bipolar, I was riding in the Philippines uh, in a tricycle. It must have been 110 degrees, and it's tropical. It's obviously a jungle. And the old boy that was driving the tricycle, I was sitting up in the front with him, and a uh, tricycle is a motorcycle that has a, a cab on it. Three wheels, or two, yeah, three wheels. And I turned to him and I said, what the hell? Where's your air conditioner? He goes, <laughs> that's the humor. Funny dude, funny dude. So anyway, uh, my fans, <laughs> that's what made me think of that. Thank you. I'm sorry, I know that I've left out some key people because uh, I'm bipolar. And I'm, I'm uh, getting into dementia. I can't remember. But, um, please, I left you out because I can't remember you, not because you're not important. You people have uh, uh, focused my life. You people have given me reason to live. You people have allowed me to show you, do I have any talents? Do I have any abilities? I didn't know I was a bard. I didn't know that. I think, I think it was um, original Wiener back in the old days when we were setting the show up. Uh, he, he called me Sir David the Bard. It just stuck. It just stuck. You've named me, <laughs> you've made me, M-A-I-N-E-D, and uh, directed the last par portion of my life here. I feel I have a purpose. When you people write in over the years, it's been two or three years I've been on, and said, gee, I, I was, uh, the lady yesterday or two days ago, she, I was correcting the papers, a junior high teacher, I was correcting papers at breakfast, and I was watching you, and I ended up spitting my coffee all over <laughs> the kids' test papers, laughing. Man, that makes me feel happy. I didn't know I was funny. I thought I was funny, but no one else did. <laughs> and when you're in school, that ain't good. <laughs> That's called the class clown. Anyway, when people write to me like that, and they say, you know, I can't eat breakfast with your show on. I just spit the food all over the place. That makes me feel good. That does, because no one's ever complimented me. No one. All these people that I've named that are in my family. Now, let's see if I've named all of them. Uh, Adam, uh, Stephen, Michelle, and, oh, uh, Genevieve. Uh, you know, I haven't seen Genevieve uh, since she was born uh, a year. Uh, Sandra, the bitch, <laughs> the bipolar, uh, no, not bipolar, she's borderline bitch. And uh, she stole Jenny, and uh, I've never seen her before uh, now either. So anyway, thank you, my, my audience. My family, the Mormon family that has shunned me because they like the skid marks in their, uh, their garments, screw you. Screw you. Don't ever call. Don't ever write. Don't ever show up with some kind of, oh, we want to reconcile, we want to repent. You know what? You can take your repentance and stick my flaming sword up your ass. When we make decisions, when we as human beings make decisions, there's some that are eternal. When you now find out your church is a, is a crock of shit, that it doesn't really exist, that the two bozos that you follow are screwing children and lying about blacks, and, and you worship these people, you deserve, you deserve what you got. You live a miserable life. You go ahead now and live a miserable life without a father because you made the choice. Not me. You made the choice. So if you're sick, disabled, injured, or guilty, don't come here. I'll slam the door right in your face. Homie's done. He don't roll that way. And so many of you that have watched my program have got similar families. Screw them. Try to cut a life out of, of this world that doesn't include them. You don't need a mother, a father. You don't need children who hate you. You don't need people who talk you down and make you feel bad. There's plenty of us out here in the world that like you, that you're okay. You know, I've got a couple of people, uh, one or two ladies that had weight problems. Hey, you're still beautiful. You're still worth something. And so, all of you, all of you who watch, many of you have problems. Don't let those problems dictate your life. Don't let a stupid mother, a brother, sister, father uh, steer you into misery. Shut the door on them. Shut the damn door on them. 
yeah, it's going to be lonely at first. Yeah, it's going to make you feel like, uh, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I not? But I'm telling you something right now. I don't even think. I, even, I haven't even thought about these bozos uh, until this morning when I wanted to do a video on Thanksgiving. This is my first Thanksgiving with my Filipino wife where she's cooking the food that she really wants to learn to be a full-fledged um, American wife. Most holidays, when I was married to these bitches, I never participated in. I sometimes go in my room and just sit and look out the window because it's supposed to be a happy time. It's supposed to be family, 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 and it's supposed to be, oh, and we're having fun. Well, the Mormons fake that. The Mormons fake that. They're a miserable group of people. So if you're feeling a little down today, been there, done that. If you're recovering from um, a suicide of uh, a loved one, been there, been there. Wasn't able to done that yet, but been there. So try the best you can. Forge a new life. There are people out there that uh, can love you, that can say, gee, you know, you're talented, you're interesting, you're funny. And when you people did that for me, my whole life changed around. I've been vindicated. These assholes that used to be supposedly blood linked to me and chemically and genetically linked screw them. I don't know where they are, I don't know what they're doing, and I'm glad of it. They are not persecuting the bard anymore. And if there's anybody that needs uh, money, uh, just write into the bard store. Mark will give you whatever you want. <laughs> and Allison out there in Tennessee, her and, and, and uh, her husband, uh, Mike, I want to say Mark, Mike, uh, you know, they're multi-billionaires. Go ahead and write. And Anna, oh my God, that girl's got money up the, up the kazoo. Uh, I was watching um, Marie Osmond tapes uh, all week and uh, trying to put some material in my show, and it reminded me of Ann. She's just a doll, personality-wise and a doll. And uh, my heart went out to her when she gave me a, a video, or a, uh, not a video, no, she didn't send me. Yeah, my heart really goes out to her when I watch her videos. <laughs> no, no. When she sent me a posted message of some of the difficulties she's had in life, and her children ought to love her and admire her. She's a survivor. So anyway, happy the Thanksgiving. Uh, it's the only time I've ever uh, celebrated Thanksgiving, and it's basically because of you people. So... I do have health and enable marrow and the bone, strength and loins and sinews, power and priesthood to be upon me and upon my posterity through all generations of time and throughout all eternity. Please don't slit my throat. Please don't cut me open. Please take a look at the bar store. Mark has in there a, a money tree. And all you have to do, uh, you can get a dollar and uh, get a dollar off the money tree. You know, Mark, Mark's a clever little guy. He knows how to make money. <laughs> the bard is gone. Happy Thanksgiving.